Hey guys, Encore Performance here back with another video. Today we're going to be playing the new Victors and Vanquish DLC, and we're going to be trying to complete Constantinople 1453 as an immortal without any losses. We're picking this scenario because I've heard really good things about it, about how well made it is for my friend already, and I think that it's going to be much easier to do as an immortal due to the defensive nature of it, where we can rely on our strong Byzantine fortifications. For those of you that don't know yet, in concept, doing a scenario as an immortal is not losing any units, so having zero deaths on the statistics page. However, you can delete a unit and it won't appear on the statistics page. I think that's a bit of a cheesy way to do it, that's just me, so I'm not going to be doing that. So at the end you'll see everything I had at the start still gathered there. We're going to be taking the majority of the units that we won't be using, such as our weaker infantry and such, back towards the Hagia Sophia where they'll be safe there. However, we'll bring our cataphracts, paladins forward, our mercenary kipchaks there can be tossed into the castle to help with the arrow fire, and we'll be garrisoning the majority of our towers with whatever missile units we can, such as hand cannons or the crossbow line. The attacks in this scenario are going to be varied, as we'll have 10 minutes of peace as we each gather our casualties, well, <laughs> just the Ottomans in this case, and rebuild our defenses and stuff, and then a 10 minute assault, 10 minutes of peace, 10 minute assault. It's not quite peace as we won't be on a peace treaty, but they won't be swarming our walls with the same amount of units. Up to the north is where the Turks are attempting to bring their ships into the Golden Horn. Thankfully for us, if we come right here at the beginning with our ships, we're able to dispatch these docks pretty quick with our strong Venetian galleons that'll have full armor upgrades and an additional, well just it adds up to 495 HP, so they're certainly going to be able to tank a couple more shots. And once they get weak, we can just bring them back and repair them, which is going to be useful <laughs> to not lose any ships as that would count as a death just as much as losing a unit. As we wait in anticipation of the Ottomans' assault, we'll be able to send some of our mercenary Keshiks across the water to attempt to negotiate an alliance with the mayor of Galatia. We can then safely eradicate the Turkish presence of navy up to the north of us in the Golden Horn here by destroying that second dock. Once we arrive in Galatia, the mayor general tells us that he can't directly help us, but he will help us through subtler means if we're able to kill the Turkish Pasha Zagonis. He lies just north of the Galatian city, so we'll be able to lure him with our Keshiks and the majority of his Janissaries down towards our strong Italian galleons, which are going to subsequently deal with them very quick. However, he will have fled back to his camp as the coward he is, but it's no matter, we'll kill him there, and then the mayor will grant us a couple more extra HP galleons. At this point, the Ottomans are going to begin their first preliminary assault. Now, his infantry aren't really a threat as we've got a large number of towers. The issue are the siege rams that are not countered by towers and the bombard cannons that outrange the towers. Due to this, we're going to have to sally out with small groups of paladins in order to kill the bombard cannons and then the subsequent surrounding rams. We'll then send these back inside of their respective gate where there should be a missionary waiting to heal them. We can also use our cataphracts to clear up whatever infantry are left due to the fact that Byzantine cataphracts shred infantry. Wave after wave of the Turkish onslaught will attack us. Thankfully for us, we have an extra Byzantine building HP bonus, so we'll last out longer than most would. We can now start to send our ships to make sure that the Bosphorus is clear. We'll kill one Turkish ship here, which does not have added HP, and then start heading south. Even before the assault itself is finished, whenever we get a chance, we can just head out and begin to repair our defenses. To the north, these Ottoman ships will continue to spawn in. Lucky for us, we have a fortified tower here garrisoned with units, so not only will this tower have additional range, quickly kill the enemy, but it even regenerates HP slowly over time. At this point in time, the Ottomans realize that this assault is failed. They've been getting completely destroyed by our defenses. So, they're going to go back to their camp and try and come up with a new strategy for 10 minutes, even though, since they're Ottomans, I think it's going to involve cannons. But much as Stratagos says, there is a rhythm to this siege, so as they pull back, we'll be able to repair our defenses, make sure, heal our paladins and such, but when they return, that's when we have to be ready with strong walls, strong defenses, and strong cavalry. Now, I haven't mentioned it yet, but I will as we repair our galleons. In order, our win condition in this scenario is to simply survive until June 1st while repelling the enemy. It's currently April 12th, so we've got a couple days left. 
However, I think we can do it easily as an immortal. But to do it as an immortal, we'll have to kill these green ships here before heading further south in order to snipe the two Ottoman admirals. Now, this might sound a little bit risky if we're trying to do it as an immortal, but with our coastline towers being able to help us and our high HP ships, other than that one, it's not too difficult and we should be able to clear up all of the Ottoman ships. And of course, during the assault, no Ottoman ships will come up against our city walls, so once we've killed what ships were there, we can simply send our gallons back home to be repaired. We're going to just re-wall the areas where the walls are weak due to the fact that repairing a wall takes more time than just building a new piece, and it'll be helping to add a secondary layer of defense. We'll also rebuild any towers we've lost, that way we can safely garrison the units that were inside them back in. Once again, we just quickly repair our galleons, and you can see there, there's that double layer of wall and those units being re-garrisoned into their tower. The we'll then destroy again. an Ottoman dock to the back. east as the second wave of the onslaught begins. We get lucky with a good paladin charge and then even using our heroes to charge out at the top in order to take out some Ottoman siege, but it does seem like the Ottomans have decided to step up their numbers this time and also bring a couple missile units like those cavalry archers. There's a legend that special Byzantine soldiers would sneak out of the city at night in order to harass the Turks, sort of as our paladins sneak out now. But one night, upon returning to the city, they left the gate unlocked. This resulted in the fall of Constantinople. After we accidentally leave our gate open, it seems over for us. However, our elite cataphracts make very quick work of what infantry did come inside. It is almost as if they are trapped in here with us instead of the us being trapped in here with them. Now, in the center and the top of the map, they will consistently attack us, but once they attack the south just once at the beginning, the Ottomans will pay no more attention to it. So, we can simply rewall that now, as our center faces the toughest challenge yet. With rams stripping down the walls, with dozens upon dozens of units still continuing to flood against us, as hundreds must lay in front of our walls, things do not look good. However, if we build some additional towers, further back where step 8 lancers can't range them through the walls, we should have a better time. Then after having a close call with a fishing ship, we can sally our navy back out in order to continue to harass the Ottomans and push further south. Of course, that's where the Great Crusader army is going to come to save us. They'll be here any day now, surely. And we also continue to push towards Hamza Bey, the final Ottoman admiral, who once he comes up against our towers and with our heavy galleons attacking him, we make short work of. This inspires the men and also grants us a large number of resources, which is going to be good due to the fact that our resources are somewhat limited within the city walls. There is no gold to be mined. We have a couple relics due to the fact that during the siege the Byzantines would use church relics and stuff that they could in order to gain what they needed. There is some stone within ruins that can be mined, and there is the odd amount of wood. We cannot construct farms, so all we have to do is eat the berries that are around us or the goats and sheep. At this point, another Ottoman assault begins, but thanks to the fact that we have both crenellations and stronghold research, our castle is not only going to fire 33% faster, but it's also going to shoot an additional three tiles, and unlike the Teutons, we aren't missing our bracer upgrade. This is when the Ottomans make a play to land their troops inside the settlement. Unfortunately for them, they haven't figured out yet that not only is the Golden Horn walled off, but even our small harbors hit small sea gates, resulting in them being sunk by sea towers. Then, once again, we send our paladins out into the chaos in order to kill what siege we can before charging them all back inside. Unfortunately, we once again allow the gate to remain open, which is not going to be good. We can delete a couple walls where we need in order to be able to access rams easily. At this point, once again, our cataphracts can make short work of what he has sent into the walls. Just this you see on screen, it is not us who is trapped, but them. We can then get back into our regular repetition of sending our paladins out, killing what siege we can, running them back inside where they can be safe, and healing them with our missionaries. Thankfully, the brunt of the assault seems to come in the north, where with our castle garrison full of kipchaks and what hand cannons are needed to fill up the rest, we make short work of whatever comes up against us, and those bombard cannons are heavily outranged, unlike in the middle of the map where we'll have to snipe the bombard cannons like that in order to make sure that they don't destroy all of our towers. 
have an idea. However, this is when our commander of the troops, Stratagos, has a brilliant idea. If we could even just graze the Sultan, it would be it would be brilliant. It'd be amazing for troop morale and demoralizing for the Turk to show how determined we are. However, he says it would be certain death to any of the men we send. That doesn't sound good if we're doing this without any deaths. This is when a Crusader vanguard, at least it's what we hope it is, fingers crossed, this better not be the main army, just three transports, arrives in the south. We'll need to destroy the Turkish blockade, or at least part of it with our galleons in order to let them out. But this is going to be helpful, as it'll grant us some much more needed units. We can then repair our Keshiks before striking on the Ottoman commander in the east. Now, there's no objective located with him, and I don't know if there was one at a later point in time or something, but I just really don't like the Ottomans. They gotta get out of here. This is our city. So, we'll deal with him as well, and once he's dead, we'll then load all of our Keshiks back on and ride on home. Well, sail home. Ride part of the way. Now, there's one thing I haven't mentioned yet. We actually can't train certain units, so we're able to bolster our Paladin numbers now due to those transport ships, which is very good for us. We cannot build the Paladin line anything further than a knight. We can't build our own galleons, which is why we're relying on the heavy HP Italian ones. So these new Paladins are going to be very nice, as now they're just going to be absorbing much more damage without anybody dying, and having a higher damage output due to the higher numbers. We've also upgraded the fortifications in the middle in the last 10 minute truce, due to the fact that we were getting overwhelmed there, at least that's what it felt like. So now, we have just a few towers, and with all of these, it seems that the Ottomans are no match for the Great Walls of Constantinople. Now in the next time of peace, I had been reflecting on what Stratagos said, and I thought about it. He said any men, implying soldiers or troops we sent, it'd be certain death for. But what if we just sent villagers to snipe the Sultan? Those weren't included in the Sultan sudden death. So, we'll send villagers as the next assault begins in en masse, We'll also continue to sally out with our paladins, killing cannons where we can before running back home, as our villagers continue to construct bombard towers and keeps, which are going to be very good as we creep closer and closer towards Mehmet. Then, as he charges, we can give him a taste of what he loves most, cannon fire. Not only do we wound the Sultan, but we actually outright kill him. Unfortunately though, due to A, historical issues, and B, campaign balance issues, because you could just send your entire army out at the start, Killing him does not end the scenario, even though it's the 23rd of May, so the end is in sight. We'll clear the entire Turkish blockade to the south because surely that Crusader army will be coming soon. And then we can send our galleons back into a safe harbor before giving the Galatians part of what they deserve. Now, in history, they didn't outright betray the Byzantines, but they should have been more helpful. So, we'll start to attack around all their docks and buildings, as there's only room for one superpower on this river. Now we begin to bring our villagers home, back to our towers, but unfortunately for us, the Ottomans have discovered our manor home. Lucky for us though, we've taken the fight from the city walls out into the city outskirts, so there's no real risk to what buildings are destroyed out here, and we're able to deal with the cannon, where they are not as protected as when they first sally up against the city. We then have a close call with our villagers before they jump into a tower, and then a closer call with our paladins, but they'll remain alright. Now. As this is the final wave and we have but five minutes till we are deemed victorious, we bring everybody back to the Hagia Sophia itself. This is due to the fact that we were just getting overwhelmed in too many spots, and it's simply easier to bring our men back to another, not only one other line of defense, but a second line of defense as there's a wall through the middle of the city. So the majority of our units lay there, while our couple paladins and villagers lie at the top. Now, in the final moments of the siege, it is said Constantine XI delivered this speech before charging the enemy with his bodyguard. This speech which I will now recite as we charge. Once, this city mastered the entire universe. She placed beneath her feet Pontus, Armenia, Numidia, Italy, Ethiopia, Spain, Phoenicia, Arabia, Mesopotamia, the lands of the Celts, and those of the Amazonians. Our empire, presently humbled, did fell the walls of Carthage, rivaled the Parthians and Sassanids, repelled the savage Huns, slayed the Bulgars, see the Seljuks return to dust, tamed the wild Mongols and cast out the Latins. If she is now finally to be devoured by the House of Osman, as my city falls, I shall fall with her. 
Silly Constantine though, because nobody fell. We complete the scenario with zero units lost and a whopping 4,700 units killed. I'll now return to the map and just show that I still have all of my starting units located by the Hagia Sophia, save for the couple villagers and such. We can just quickly survey the chaos that we caused on the Ottomans, that helpful sea tower here. We have all of our starting units. It's a bit hard to count, but if someone wants, they can. I'll also click on the towers to show everybody garrisoned within. That's everybody we had. Our, na our navy, my bad, castle with the kipjacks and such monks we created the last line of defense which remained untouched this ginormous ottoman fleet that we would have had them dealt with and what remains of our outer walls our final charge in which nobody actually died in this scenario and five villagers and our ten paladins thank you guys very much for watching this was an incredible scenario i'd like to thank the creator of this dlc very much i hope you guys all have a good one see you guys later